So today we're going to add a few different types of enemies and rings into the game. So the enemies will start out inactive, and once you get close enough, they'll turn on and start to shoot at you. There will be these stationary ones, also the enemies I've kind of gone over before that follow you, and then their third one with two windshields is going to be an enemy that's following a specific path, just like we're following a specific path. We also can shoot them. So the first thing we'll go over is this turret. It's a kinematic body because it was just easier to keep the code to search for bodies entering an area opposed to worrying about different types of things overlapping. We have two different meshes. We'll have the base and the ball, which also has the turret on the front. And these are all primitives that you can just easily make right here in Godot. And I did grab a few textures off of Open Game Art just to play around with them. They're not really necessary right now, but I'll throw them in the comments, or I'll throw them in the description so you can use them. They're nothing particular, particularly special, and we'll be going over a lot of the materials and particles later on anyway. The base is just a cylinder shape that has a different top radius than bottom radius. So I made the top radius 2 and the bottom radius 5, so it makes this nice little cone. And the ball is just a sphere that you place right on top. And the turret, I want the ball and the turret to move together, even though you won't be able to see much of it going on. I just wanted them to be together anyway, so there's really no reason to have them completely separate. And I have the muzzle where the bullet will be coming from, just like in all the previous muzzles that we've made. Now in the script, it's going to be very similar to what we've gone over in the past, but I'll just go over it here again real quick. So we're going to send a signal, and in that signal we're going to need the information for what type of bullet we're going to be shooting. We're going to grab the muzzle reference so we know where to shoot from, and also the ball reference so we know what part to rotate. And we're going to set the target at the beginning in the ready function so it knows to shoot at the player. We're just going to connect the fire bullet signal to the game node, and we're also going to get the player and set that as a target. We start off having the active be off or on false. That way, not every ship in the game is going to start shooting at you from super far off right when the game loads. We're going to wait till we get closer, and if it's active, then we will aim. And this one doesn't really have any movement, per se, because it's the stationary turret. And so we're just going to have to rotate the ball by looking at where the target is and slurp to that rotation fairly slowly. That way it's not always pinpoint shooting at you. We'll put the global transform to that rotation. Now, actually, just looking at this, this is kind of redundant. I'm setting the the origin over and over again on something that doesn't move. So we're just going to change this to basis, and we will get the basis of that quaternion A. Because you cannot set the basis directly with a quaternion, so we'll have to get the basis of A. And this will come in later on when uh, I show you how we activate the enemies. And so it will need an activate function and a deactivate function so it does stop shooting at you once you're past it. And so we'll turn the active to true and false, obviously, but we're also going to turn that time shooter off. That way it's not just continually shooting in the same direction when the game starts and after you're past. So when we start that shooter function, the timeout on that timer is going to grab the muzzle location and the direction that the muzzle is pointing, and we will send the fire bullet signal with that position and the direction and the enemy bullet, so the preloaded scene that's at the top of the script. And it will be sent, just like when the player shoots, to this fire bullet function, and it will make an instance of the bullet and add it to the game. So the basic enemy is basically the same thing, just simpler. And we have a kinematic body, the ship, 
its collision shape, the timer, and the muzzle, just like previously. And in the script, a lot of this is repeat also. So this is all the same, except we have a speed and a velocity since we'll be moving forward. Um, the ready is the same. But like I said, if we're active, not only will we aim and point at the player, we're going to be moving forward whichever direction the enemy is pointing. We'll aim, very similar. And we'll activate, deactivate, and have the timer. So with the enemy following the path, it looks exactly the same. Muzzle, mesh, timer. And instead of having a velocity that we move the ship by, we're going to have the speed change the offset of the parent. Now the reason for this is the enemy is always going to be in a path follow. So you can think of the path follow as the container that's moving everything along, and we want that to move the ship. So this path node needs a path follow, which actually moves everything by the offset. So as you can see, instead of the velocity, we're going to get the parent in the ready function and move its offset by the speed. And everything else should be the same. Again, we have the rotation, and then the activate and deactivate, and the shooting. So a brief glimpse of what the paths look like. I just have some quick little curves that the ship is going to follow. And these are just the basic enemies. And here is just a stationary enemy. So just a couple curves. So all of my enemies have this activate and deactivate function. And how we're actually going to call those. Initially, I my first thought was to have the enemies have areas that would check to see if the player was there. But I actually thought it was cleaner to have the player have an area. That way we only have one area checking for where things are. And I wouldn't put that in the dolly system that we have. So we already have the camera and the guide and the player, but now we also have this box that moves along the entire map along with the ship and obviously it's in the dolly. So when the enemies get inside this box, they will start moving and shooting. And when the, they get just past the player, they will stop. So in this activate enemies area, we have the signals bodied entered and body exited. And where those go, we're going to look at each body that enters the area. We'll see if it's an enemy. And then we're going to check to see if it has the method activate. And then we will call that method. It's important for you to check to see if it has that method just as a backup to make sure things don't crash before you directly call anything in another script. And this is just the opposite. Or check to see if the body is an enemy. If it doesn't have the deactivate function, then we will call the deactivate. And like I said, the has method is just a fail safe in case I forgot to put this function in. But you'll still notice if there's a glitch or something because they won't act the way that they're supposed to. This needs a little bit of adjustment still of how this works. Sometimes it's kind of awkward when the enemies get right behind the player and they kind of freeze. We'll keep working on that to make it a little bit smoother. But basically what you end up with are enemies that wait, they shoot, and we'll add some score soon enough and i think we're going to go over the rings in the next video along with the score right now they're just basic area 3ds that if you go over them they disappear and they need a little bit more work still anyway so we're just gonna wait till next time to go over them if you have any questions let me know in the comments and We'll see you in the next video.